Hi everyone and welcome to another tutorial video. As you may have noticed, I divided my YouTube channel into two categories. One is games and one is tech stuff. Today I'm combining the two together. So we're installing a Feed the Beast Minecraft server on our Xpenology build. I will use my bare metal setup for this build. Uh, the bare metal setup is still uh, the setup I used in the bare metal tutorial video you might have seen. And the bare metal build is actually my old server. Uh, it's the AMD A4 5350. It's a quad-core CPU, I believe 1.6 gigahertz. At the moment it has 8 gigs of RAM. Um, it should be more than enough for this, for this video, and for the server that is. Um, the feed to b server can be quite hardware demanding, especially when you have more players joining your server. It could put some load on your memory and of course the CPU. Um, at the time I've upgraded this system uh, to an uh, Intel Core i5 2500 with 12 gigabytes of RAM. After that I have gone to the server I'm using now and that's the Gen 8 uh, micro server from HP. So the usage of this server, if you have 1 to 10 players on your server I would recommend uh, going with 2 to 4 gigabytes. And I think 4 gigabytes is the bare minimum. If you have 10 to 20 players on your server, 8 gigs of RAM will do. But also the CPU needs to be fast enough. For this video this will definitely do. Of course you could also try to install this on a Synology based uh, NAS. But I wouldn't recommend to run this on an ARM uh, based NAS system with only 256 megabytes of RAM. Uh, with that being said, this runs on as I said, a quad-core CPU with 8 gigs RAM should be more than enough. It has 160 gigabyte hard drive in it, um, also enough for this video. The file size of the server is quite small, uh, only a few gigs. But when more people join your server, file sizes could exponentially increase. <coughs> at my other V2B server, I ran on my Ubuntu server at the time. Uh, normal file sizes of the world map would be around 12 gigabytes. If you have more players joining your server and start creating their own world. You can imagine that if the file size increase, also the backups uh, increase. As default, I believe it makes like 10 to 12 backup files and then start overwriting the old ones. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Um, first, you log into your NAS system just to the graphical user interface through your browser. Um, once you're in the screen, we need a few services enabled, uh, which are disabled by default. The first one is SSH uh, for connecting PuTTY, I will get into that later. And another one is the FTP slash SFTP server for copying the files to the NAS. You could also do it with uh, Windows Explorer. I like to do it with, um, with FileZilla and with the SFTP protocol. So I've changed my language settings from Dutch to English. Makes explaining some things a little bit easier. Um, so let's get started. You go to Control Panel. And from there on you go to network. Uh, in network you go to the tab file services. From there you go to FTP. And you say enable FTP SSL. That's the encryption I like to use on my FTP server. Uh, for the CDL we'll use the standard port settings of 21. And then you can click on apply. Settings applied, nice. If you scroll to the bottom you have terminal and SNMP, you click that one. And then you say enable SSH service. Also for the purpose of this video, let's leave it uh, there at 22. And you say apply. Those are the two settings we need. And we can close this window. And what we now want to do is uh, make a folder for our FTB server files on our NAS system. So you go to file station. And it says me I don't have any uh, shared folder created yet. So we're going to do that. And we call it FTB. And as description I will say feed the beast server. I created on volume 1. I only have one volume in this NAS system. So this is the volume I'm going to use. And we can say OK. Now we can give uh, other users access to this folder, but the user I created for this NAS already has uh, read-write access for this folder. So not going to change that. We're going to click OK. 
and you can close this window and this window. Okay. So now we're going to download the server files we need for our V2B server. Just open up a new tab, go to the uh, URL of the V2B server files download. Uh, I will provide the download link in the video description also. Um, then press enter. Okay, and we're going to download this file. I'm just saving this to my desktop in a new folder called FTB server files. And once downloaded, you can just open it. Okay, and we're going to extract the contents inside to a subfolder of this. Let's call that one files. Okay. And then we can click this away. What we want to do next is get these files to a NAS system. So I'm using FileZilla. Also provide a download link in the video description. And then you can connect to your, to your NAS system. On the standard port 21. And we say connect. Gives us a warning about certificate. Well, I trust this site, so it wouldn't be a problem. And you can see the folder of FTB we created. And we're going to navigate on the left side to our download folder and to our extraction folder of our FTB server files. And we're going to copy all these contents to the FTB folder on the NAS side. Okay. Once this is done, you can close your FTP client, start up PuTTY. If you don't have PuTTY, I also will provide a download link to PuTTY in the video description. In the field of hostname, you can just type the IP address of your NAS system. And the port setting, we left it at 22. So 22 it is, and we're connecting through SSH. It might give you a connection security breach um, message. Um, just accept that and it will connect to your NAS system. And you also may log in with your user credentials. Yeah, password. Okay, and we're in. So let's list the directory structure. And here we can see we have a, a folder called volume one. We're going to navigate to that folder. And here we can see our FTB folder. So we're going to navigate to that. And here you can see the files inside we just copied to our NAS. So what we want to do now is just install our uh, V2B server. Um, and for that, we're going to launch the FTB install.sh. And we do that with the command sh ftb install.sh. And it downloads the server files it needs for the server to work. And as you can see, it's fairly quickly done. So in an ideal world, what we want to do now is just fire up our server. But if we want to try that and we type sh and then server start dot sh, it gives us a notification. We need to read this file and agree to that, to the terms. Okay, now let's do that then. Um, as you can see, the file is also in this folder. Let's open it with V. We move to this line where it says false and we replace this line. Okay, and that would be capital I is true. Okay, and we just want to save this file. Okay. 
Okay. That. I'm using Fee, but you could also use just uh, Notepad++ or Notepad for that matter, if you like that one. Um, as long as you accept the ALI, you can continue uh, with this. Um, so we can now. And if we just start up our server now for the first time, sh server start dot sh. It says server start dot sh line 18 Java command not found. So it's missing Java. So we're going to install Java on our NAS system. We go back to our um, web interface of a NAS system and we go to the package center. Yeah, I agree to that. And we're simply going to search on Java. And we're going to install Java 8 of Synology. Now once that's done, we go back to Pudi and we try it again. And it still gives us this message. So what we want to do now is just reboot our NAS system. You need admin rights, of course. Okay, so now it's going to reboot itself. And that's that. And also we can start a putty again. And just connect to our NAS through SSH. Also, my webcam is eating up my head again. Okay, port 22, SSH, yes. And we just log in with our user credentials. And the password. And we navigate to our volume one FTB folder. Now let's give it the final shot, shall we? SH server start.sh. And what do you know? It just starts up. Starting up this server can take up some time uh, on this hardware when I was running my old server on the Ubuntu server, the feed to be server. It took me about 10 to 12 minutes to completely load up the FTB server. So it will approximately take up the same time for this, I guess. Okay, while this is starting up, let's see how the stress on our NAS system is. And as you can see, the memory starts starting to fill up. Yeah, as I mentioned before, it's quite memory hungry. Well, in the meantime, let's start up Feed the Beast Launcher. Uh, let me see, Feed the Beast Launcher, there it is. And let me get this over to this screen, yes. We can go through the options. Uh, first of all, you need to make sure you select the Infinity Evolved mod pack. And if you take a look at my options, I increase the maximum memory size to eight gigabytes. Uh, okay. Um, as a user account, you can just log in with your credentials of Minecraft, official Minecraft, and you can just click on a launch. Oh, let me select the profile launch. No, it's going to work. Yeah, there we go. I still use the old uh, Feed the Beast launcher because I don't like the, the Curse client. I will provide the download link of the old FTB launcher in the video description. And let me get this screen over to here also. Yes. Let's check back at our NAS system. As you can see, the memory is almost completely used by the FTB server. So let's check how that's going. Registering RF tools. I think that's one of the last messages it shows when it starts up. So let's check back with our Feed the Beast launcher. Let's wait for it to load up all the modules. Okay, so there we go. 
And now we can choose multiplayer, direct connect, and server address would be the address of our NAS system. And we just click join server and see if it works. Let's open PuTTY. Yeah, definitely responds to it. Okay. I hear a piggy squeal. Okay. So we're definitely in the game. I can't see anything. Let's change the settings a little bit. Mm. Super bright, yeah. Yeah, let's have a look at this village. Yeah, so there you have it. It works. Oh yeah, it works. No lag. And let's see what the server side does. Giving me no messages of that many ticks behind. I had that kind of messages in the past and it created enormous lag. But it looks to be running all right. If you have to, if you have a look at our NAS, yeah, the, the memory usage is very high. So I can really recommend um, getting as much RAM as you can on uh, on your Xpanology build for this um, V2B server. And how many mods are we currently running? As you can see here in the um, in the top right corner, 184 mods. So definitely no vanilla Minecraft, but I like this uh, this mod pack. I used to play it a lot with friends and um, just automating things, machine machinery, and all that kind of stuff. Really cool. Um, so yeah, um, I should say give this a try. Uh, let me know what you think of this video in the comment section. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.